This is the AOS 3.5. It's the baby brother of the AOS 5 by Chris Rosser, and it's designed to be a very low resonance sub 250 gram frame. And the design concept is to give the optimum performance in a sub 250 gram frame, taking into account the weight, the motors, the battery, as well as the frame. And I built and reviewed the AOS 5 recently, and it was the best 5 inch quad that I've flown. And this uses many of the same design concepts, but it's just smaller. So will it be as good as the AOS 5? I'll show you how I built this, the components I selected, some flight footage and the final tune that I settled on. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. And this is YouTube, you know what to do. Subscribe, like and hit the bell for more videos like this. I really do like the AOS 5, but over the last couple of years I've tended to prefer 3.5 and 7 inch quads. So I was really keen to see how this little AOS 3.5 performed. My frame has just turned up from Canada. Let's have a look and see what we've got. So we have got the top and bottom plate. Now I ordered these with the dome head bolts rather than the countersunk. I'm not really a fan of countersunk bolts in carbon, not necessarily because of any weaknesses or cracking, but I found that over time, the countersink part can actually start delaminating the different sheets within the carbon frame. It doesn't make any difference to me, to be honest. The countersunk ones look great, but I'm just not a fan. So I'm using the dome head bolts. So we've got top and bottom plate, uh, four arms, and these are exactly the same. Well, they're just like mini versions of the AOS 5 arms. And these are 4mm, four of those. And I ordered a couple of spares, just in case. Hopefully I won't need those. The camera plates, uh, we've got the X plate support for the bottom. And these are the brace plates at the front and back, I seem to remember. And we got a whole bunch of hardware. Let's see what's in here. So we've got some standoffs, and let's see, we've got, these are the long bolts, I think they go through onto the standoffs, not that one, not that one, that one, that one, that one, and on the AOS frame, frame sorry, there was some spares, which is sort of good, but sort of confusing when you've got bolts left over, you're not quite sure whether you've left something off. Oh, there's another one there, look. And we've got some cap head and some dome head. So I'm not quite sure if they're just alternatives, but we'll be using the dome head on here. So let's get this all screwed together. It's nicely finished, actually. There we go, they went together pretty quickly. The camera plates are a little bit of a tight squeeze into the slots, but they do fit. Everything feels nice and rigid, as it should. And I realized as I was screwing this together, yes, there's a whole load of cap head bolts left over, but they're for the motors, of course, because the arms are four millimeters and most of the bolts that you get in the motor kits will be for three millimeter arms so again very well thought out and I just like the shape of these I think this sort of dead cat look is pretty good uh, so the components that I'm going to be using in this build are let's have a look we've got these Zing 1404 3800 kV motors which are supposed to be very very nice I haven't tried these yet and we're using these Avan, Emacs Avan props. I use these on the Smart, GEPRC Smart 35. These are 3.5 by 2.8. And I do like these. These are my favorite props at the moment. And what else have we got? Flight controller. We're gonna be using this iFlight Beast all-in-one. 
it truly is an all-in-one which I think I'm gonna to have to fit diagonally in there because we don't have the hole ah yes so yeah the holes in here will take that quite nicely very good this is an awesome all-in-one board actually because it's got black box memory included which is pretty unusual for a small all-in-one like that and it comes with a whole you know all the usual low ESR capacitor connections for um, DJI air unit whole load of mounting hardware uh, oh uh, XT60 and XT30 connectors very good and for the flight controller I'm going to be scavenging my Beta FPV 95. This is my modified version that I use for commercial work. I've got the five blade props and the slightly different uh, motors. Uh, but Cadex Vistas and the particularly the nano cameras, they're like hen's teeth at the moment. You can't get them. So I'm going to scavenge this and just borrow it off there for a little while until I can get a replacement. So let's get on and get this built up there we go it's all made up as if by magic it's a bit of a tight squeeze in there but everything does fit now I did manage to get hold of a Cadex Polar camera I had planned on using this original DJI camera but since the Nano version 2 it's like hen's teeth you can't get them anywhere this was a second choice but actually having flown about 20 packs on this this is a fantastic camera and I've got a video coming up where I'll show you some night footage of this flying around a lit car park. It really is rather good. Uh, so let's see what this all weighs. There we go. That is 161.4 grams. I've been using these GMB 650 milliamp hour batteries. I mean you could use 850s but so that's 241.8, well, near enough 242 grams. So it's still under the 250 grams. And I guess if you're gonna put something like this on it, we'll take that over. But I think the footage on here is actually really very good. And the only sort of criticism I've got of this frame, I, I do really like it. The one annoyance really is that when you mount one of these toothpick style diamond uh, all-in-one uh, controllers and ESCs you bolt all the frame together and that's fine. The problem is you can't get this bolt in here without taking the bottom plate off which is just slightly annoying. I don't know if there's something that can be fixed with an update on the frame but it's just a bit of an annoyance really. It's not the end of the world but there we go. Under the cover we've got the Cadex Vista mounted up the back here. Now I have mounted this slightly proud of the frame here. It's quite important to get some airflow between the frame and the bottom of the Vista unit. This does get quite hot. You don't need very much but uh, having some airflow under there is quite useful. At the front here we've got the Beast flight controller, all-in-one flight controller and this fits in quite nicely. Although the wires do need a bit of a tidy. This has been flown by the way. Like I say, I've had about 20 packs through this and this is fully tuned now. So I'm really pleased with this and I'll show you the tune a little bit later. On the top here is a Vifly Mini Finder, which is essential because <laughs> if you're losing this in the long grass, you're not going to find it. And the wiring I've managed to get fairly neat. I like the way, like I did on the AOS 5, you can mount it along the arms here and sort of back solder it. There's not enough room to take it around, so the wires are completely hidden because of the standoffs. Now here is the low ESR capacitor to keep the noise down on the power supply, and underneath I've got a FETTEC spike suppressor. Now you would think on a small frame, like this or with small motors and smaller ESCs one of these spike suppressors is probably not as important as it would be in something like the 5 inch but I found that these toothpick style all-in-one flight controllers are quite sensitive to noise and big spikes so I fitted one in there you can't quite see but it's mounted just underneath there quite a neat little package and the VTX or the 
DJI antenna I've just cable tied to the back here so we've got a nice short antenna that's not going to wobble about all over the place and like I say I've flown this an awful lot and the tune I've got on this I am really really pleased with so let's have a quick look at that Let's have a quick look at how I've set this up and tuned it. If you look at the ports, I've got UART2, which is the MSP, or that's how the OSD is working on the Cadex Vista, and we've got UART3, which is the S bus. All fairly straightforward. Configuration, I'm running DSHOT 300. I've got RPM filtering installed, and I'll leave a link to a video on how to do that. And these motors have got 12 poles, so that's in there props in we're running 8 kilohertz 4 kilohertz which is a safe option um, maximum arm angle I've set to 180 and let's have a look here yeah so we're on S bus that's all fine and all these are pretty much standard I've got air mode on a switch rather than having it on all the time okay let's have a quick look at the important thing so first of all let's have a look at the filters before you copy these blindly, uh, you need to build up to it and you need to do your black box logging or listen carefully to what sort of noise your motors are making. I've got all these filters turned off, all the low pass filters, the notch filters are off. All I've got on is the gyro RPM filter with three harmonics and it's a fairly narrow notch on the dynamic notch filter and using the black box logs. The noise is somewhere around 100 to 5, well, 450 hertz. So I've set my dynamic notch min and max to 100 and 500. And it's a pretty narrow little notch, so it's going to work really well. And I found that's very effective. I've got a D-term low pass starting at 100 hertz, and it's a second order or a bi-quad filter. That's all that's needed. Fantastic, so let's have a look at the PIDs and I must stress again, don't just jump in with these, you need to work up to these D values particularly using the master multiplier. And remember when you're doing the tuning, make sure that your feed forward or the stick response gain is off. Set that down here somewhere and make that zero, like that. Let's just refresh this and you need to make sure that your D min is turned off otherwise it will mask the true effect of what D is doing and this is quite an aggressive tune but because it's a very low noise frame it works really well so got the master multiplier for two PD balances at default PD, P and D gain is up at 1.3 taking this any higher and you start to get grumbling motors they're starting to chirp and tweak and just generally grumble. 1.3 was fine and to be honest anywhere between 1.6 and 1.8 was working fine for me on feed forward and I settled on 1.7. So let's have a quick look at the rates. Now my old fingers don't move so quick so I do actually like to have quite a high rate and I like to have a lot of expo and I use actual rates. I've always used actual rates since they appear because they just make a whole lot more sense and Generally, I'm sort of sitting in this, this sort of range here. And to help with that, I've scaled the throttle and we've got it set to 70%, which is around where my maximum throttle is. My throttle mid 
is sitting down, you know, I'm down about here somewhere. So I've set the throttle mid to 0.25 and added a little bit of expo. You can tweak this up and down to suit whatever you need. Rates are very personal and this is what suits me. And that's it, very easy to tune. With these components and tune on this, it's very similar to the AOS 5 and it's a fantastic sub 250 gram quad. It's so easy to tune, which is down to the low resonance design, which doesn't really surprise me given how good this AOS 5 is. A 3.5 inch drone suffers less from resonance problems than a five or a seven inch quad. And the noise spectrum is different than the AOS 5. It runs from about 100 to 450 Hertz. And because it's such low noise and you can turn off a lot of the filters, that's what makes tuning out what little frame noise there is very easy. And Chris Rosso does design an excellent frame and I've already ordered the new seven inch version, which I'm really looking forward to. So how does this stack up against other popular three and a half inch quads? For me, it's much better than this GEP RC Smart 35, which is one of the best bind and fly 3.5 inch quads around at the moment. And if you want something that's built and ready to go, just buy one of these, because GEP RC, I've done a really good job on it. But if you're planning to build your own, this AOS 3.5 is better. And ultimately, you'll get more satisfaction from building your own, and you can make it and tune it the way you want and you'll learn an awful lot in the process. And I'll leave links to all the components that I've used in the description so you can check out the latest prices. And please leave a comment and let me know what you think of this. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.